My dad sold my soul to the devil. My dad is what they call a macho man. All he wanted was sons. He lived and breathed for another Keller boy. Naturally, when my older brother was born, he was overjoyed. Three years later, he begged my mom to have another son. When he found out we were twins, he was excited to have three sons. So when my brother and I came out and he saw that I was a girl, he was despaired. I've always been his least favorite kid and he never tried to hide it. While he named my brothers Anthony and David, which mean priceless and beloved respectfully, he named me Lilith, which literally means night monster. While my brothers and mom tried to soften that direct punch to the gut by calling me Lily, he insisted on us all calling me Lilith so I could feel the disappointment that he felt the day I was born. Clearly, him and my mom did not stay married, and quite unfortunately, he signed for full custody when Anthony was five, and David and I too. Things just got worse from there. If he took Anthony and David out to eat or to see a movie, I was to stay home. He spent all his time playing sports with my brothers and wouldn't let me join, even though I, as a girl, actually showed a genuine interest in what he was doing with my brothers. When I was four, dad got cancer, and from what I heard, it was supposed to be terminal. And yup, he made a deal with Satan. Fifteen more years of life if he sold one of his children's souls, and big surprise, he chose me. So once I die, it's off to hell, no matter how little I sin or how much I pray. The first time I remember something happening to me was about a month after my dad made that deal. I was in my tiny, cramped room trying to sleep on a bed I outgrew years ago, while my brothers and dad watched a movie downstairs when I saw it, this thing in my closet. It was pale, with gaunt, sunken eyes, and a gaping mouth, its long and bony fingers wrapped around my closet door. There was no question that this thing was a demon. I immediately cried for my dad, who stormed up the stairs and gave me a proper beating for interrupting his movie night with his kids. After that, he called me a little girl for crying and locked me in my room. As I cried all that night, the demon simply watched me from the closet, unmoving. Demons watching me were pretty normal from then on. Sometimes it would be the pale, gaunt thing in my closet. Other times, a dark figure hovering over my bed. And on bad nights, a horned figure with glowing red eyes would stare at me, taunting me through the window. After a while, I stopped being scared of them. One night when I was nine, the gaunt creature was back in my closet, staring at me while I read. He began to make this really weird growling noise to which I shushed him. He then did something he never did before. While he would occasionally wrap his hand around my slightly ajar door, he never actually came out of my closet until that night. In one swift movement, he tore open my closet door and stood up fully, revealing he was taller than the ceiling itself. He bent his neck in an abnormal way to fit under the roof. I rightfully should have been terrified at this moment, but for some reason, I just wasn't that scared. We locked eyes for a while which was more awkward than scary, so I just went back to reading my book. He just looked at me curiously for a while, until my dad decided he wanted to be a horrible person again, and threw open my door to yell at me for something or other. The entire time, the demon just watched. Thankfully, my dad left after slapping me across the face, but I was crying again for the rest of the night. The demon, who now looked at me with something more than curiosity, looked back at my closed door, trying to see my dad. As I did nothing but sob, the demon just sat down beside my bed, towering over me. Neither of us looked at each other the rest of the night. I cried while he just stared off in the distance, but I wasn't alone, and that was all I cared about. From then on, things changed. I wasn't just not scared of the demons. I welcomed them, especially the gaunt-looking one who sat by me that night. He would sit with me whenever my dad was bad to me, or whenever I had boy troubles at school. He never talked at me and barely ever looked at me, but all I cared about was that he was there for me. I even gave him a name, Papa. I remember this one night I was 14 and upset because Jacob, the boy I liked, didn't invite me to the Valentine's dance at our school. On top of that, my dad had gotten into one of his moods and had thrown a chair at me. When I ran into my room, I was almost relieved to see Papa crouched by the closet. Papa! I cried, running to him. It was stupid, I know. I was calling a literal demon Papa, but I had nobody else. He was the only one who had ever shown me any sympathy. At first, he stepped back, but as I cried even harder, he looked at me in the eyes. I was in my tiny, cramped room trying to sleep on a bed I outgrew years ago, while my brothers and dad watched a movie downstairs when I saw it. This thing in my closet. It was pale, with gaunt, sunken eyes, and a gaping mouth, its long and bony fingers wrapped around my closet door. There was no question that this thing was a demon. I immediately cried for my dad, who stormed up the stairs and gave me a proper beating for interrupting his movie night with his kids. After that, he called me a little girl for crying and locked me in my room. As I cried all that night, the demon simply watched me from the closet, unmoving. Demons watching me were pretty normal from then on. Sometimes it would be the pale gaunt thing in my closet, other times a dark figure hovering over my bed, and on bad nights, a horned figure with glowing red eyes would stare at me, taunting me through the window. After a while, I stopped being scared of them. One night when I was nine, the gaunt creature was back in my closet, staring at me while I read. He began to make this really weird growling noise to which I shushed him. He then did something he never did before. While he would occasionally Occasionally wrap his hand around my slightly ajar door, he never actually came out of my closet until that night. In one swift movement, he tore open my closet door and stood up fully, revealing he was taller than the ceiling itself. He bent his neck in an abnormal way to fit under the roof. I rightfully should have been terrified at this moment, but for some reason I just wasn't that scared. We locked eyes for a while, which was more awkward than scary, so I just went back to reading my book. He just looked at me curiously for a while, until my dad decided he wanted to be a horrible person again and threw open my door to yell at me for something or other. The entire time, the demon just watched. Thankfully, my dad left after slapping me across the face, but I was crying again for the rest of the night. The demon, who now looked at me with something more than curiosity, looked back at my closed door, trying to see my dad. As I did nothing but sob, the demon just sat down beside my bed, towering over me. Neither of us looked at each other the rest of the night. I cried while he just stared off in the distance, but I wasn't alone, and that was all I cared about. From then on, things changed. I wasn't just not scared of the demons. I welcomed them, especially the gaunt-looking one who sat by me that night. He would sit with me whenever my dad was bad to me, or whenever I had boy troubles at school. He never talked at me, and barely ever looked at me, but all I cared about was that he was there for me. I even gave him a name, Papa. I remember this one night I was 14 and upset because Jacob, the boy I liked, 
didn't invite me to the Valentine's dance at our school. On top of that, my dad had gotten into one of his moods and had thrown a chair at me. When I ran into my room, I was almost relieved to see Papa crouched by the closet. Papa! I cried, running to him. It was stupid, I know. I was calling a literal demon Papa, but I had nobody else. He was the only one who had ever shown me any sympathy. At first, he stepped back, but as I cried even harder, he looked at me in the eyes. Maybe for the first time since that night, he stepped out of the closet. Then he did something surprising. He hugged me back as I felt his icy, cold hands wrap around me. I should have been terrified, but I was filled with love. Love for finally finding a dad who loved me. But one night, as I was reading To Kill a Mockingbird for my school project, I made a mistake. Papa looked curious, so I decided to read out loud to him. I guess I made too much noise, though, because David opened my door. Lilith, what the F is that? He screamed, and my dad came rushing up. Papa couldn't hide in time, and now Anthony, David, and my dad all stared him down. He stood up, revealing his giant stature, and David began to cry while Anthony froze in place, and my dad ran off to get a vial of holy water he had kept by his bed ever since the deal was made. As I tried to run away with Papa, he stopped me and shook his head. We both knew it was too late. I cried as I hugged him goodbye, and as my dad approached us with the holy water and sprayed it on Papa, he let out a blood-curdling screech that could have been heard across the country. I watched in horror as Papa, who had stayed by my side all these years, faded. He was large, even bigger than Papa, and had two large horns, a goat's head, and a large stick in his hand. Dad turned around slowly, looking to this thing as he glared down at my abuser. Your Majesty, I, we had a deal, Stanley. I granted you 15 more years of life on two conditions. Two, it boomed, and I noticed David had wet himself. It was a misunderstanding, sir, my daughter. You were granted 15 more years of life on the conditions that I get your daughter upon her death and you never harm anyone ever again, do you understand? It asked. Yes, and I haven't. Promise. The creature laughed. First you break a promise and now you lie? To his satanic majesty himself? Seeing you have not only harmed your daughter her entire life, but have killed one of my best minions, you have broken my trust. I'm breaking off the deal. My dad got down on his knees. Please, I'll do anything. He begged. Satan looked at me. There is one way. If Lilith, your daughter, and the one you cursed forgives you, I will set you free, and you will live the rest of your life. My dad slowly turned to me and put on a smile. Hey, Lily, what about it? Look at me. I'm your dad. Your papa. I raised you. Don't you love me? I'm your dad. He said, getting more agitated as I stared at him. It's up to you, Lilith. Satan said. I looked to Papa's body on the floor, then back to my dad. Come on, you gonna believe Satan or your dear old dad? My dad said, pleading to me. I glared at him. My dad is dead. You killed him. I said, I don't forgive you. And with that, Satan dragged my dad down to the netherworld. My brothers and I hearing his screams until it was far away enough that it faded away, to where he could never hurt me again. As my brothers cried in the loss of their dad, I walked back to Papa on the ground and kissed his forehead. Goodbye, Papa. Thank you.